Hi everyone, Pete the Wargamer here, back with another Flames of War painting tutorial. In this guide, I'll be showing you how to tackle World War II British armor in a scheme common in the late war European theater, and I'll be using the Vallejo range of paints as well as a Cromwell found in the British starter force, and I'll be using those to produce this tutorial. Before we start painting, we first of all need to apply a primer so the later layers of paint adhere to that miniature's surface properly. For this step, I've chosen to use a black primer, as this will create the appearance of shadows in some of those harder to reach areas, like those around the tank tracks, and if you just miss them, they just appear to be shadows. However, you can feel free to use whatever color you prefer here. You'll also notice that I've kept the tracks separate. This is an optional step, but will allow me to more easily paint those tracks later on. To hold on to them whilst I'm painting, I've drilled a small 1mm hole into the back of the track plates before gluing a length of wire in to create a rudimentary holder. With everything primed, we next need to apply the base colour for the tank's armour, and for this we'll be using some bronze green. However, applying the paint straight from the bottle can be a little too thick and won't give us a smoother finish. This can be remedied by mixing in a little water, roughly an even amount of water, and paint is usually enough to create a thin enough mixture. Once mixed, apply this paint across the entirety of the armour. The first layer will go on quite translucent still, but don't worry as you can apply a second layer over the top once the first layer has dried fully. This will result in a much smoother finish with, without any brush strokes or potentially obscuring details by applying your paint too thickly. After the base coat, we next want to pick out the raised edges of the tank and lighten the colour slightly by using some Russian uniform, and the best way to do this is with a dry brush. Dry brushing involves loading up a fairly large brush with some paint and removing some of the excess onto a tissue or a piece of paper until only a small amount of paint remains in those bristles. With your dry brush ready, quickly drag it across the whole miniature. The paint will start to accumulate just onto the hard edges, leaving only a thin line of the lighter Russian uniform, which will really help those details to stand out. Now that we have the basic color of the armor, we next want to focus our base coats onto some of the smaller details. The first of these will see us applying some flat brown thinned out in the same way as our bronze green over the metal tracks. This dark, slightly reddish brown will give the tracks a dirted and rusted appearance that we can build upon later in the tutorial. As well as the tracks, you can also paint any wooden areas, such as the tool handles, with this paint as well. Across our Cromwell, there will be several areas of dark metal and rubber. These will include some of the secondary weapons, as well as stowage items such as tow cables and tool heads. In addition to these areas, we also have the rubber trim of the road wheels as well. We want to apply a base coat of German grey to all of these areas, thinning the paint in the same way as before. This dark grey colour will allow us to benefit from a black wash later on, something that using a pure black wouldn't allow us to do. Now that all the base coats have been completed, we can now start to apply some washes. Washes are great for quickly boosting the visibility of details. They will flow into the recessed areas and darken them slightly as they dry to create the appearance of shadows. The first wash we will be applying in this way is sepia wash, but much like the base coats applied straight out of the pot, the wash is probably a little too strong. So we first need to water it down a little. Mix water into your wash until you have a consistency similar to what you see here. With your wash thinned, we next want to apply it across the entirety of the Cromwell's armor, as well as the wooden storage items, ensuring that you get a good even coverage and that you don't allow the wash to pull up into the areas too much. Once dried, you will find that those small details will stand out much more than they did before, and the tank will have a slightly dirty appearance too. Following our sepia wash, we next want to use some black wash, thinned in the same manner as before, but this time we'll be applying it in two different ways. The first is an all-over wash, like we did in the last step, but this time limited to the German grey details and the tracks. When washing the tracks, make sure that you get the wash into all of those nooks and crannies. The second method is a much more localized and targeted application of the wash using a finer tip brush than we did before. Using this, I'll be directly applying some black wash into some of the details on the hull. By adding this darker wash, we can create darker shadows around certain details such as hatches, hinges, and panels, which will make them all look more defined. The illusion that these details are more pronounced than they actually are will really help to improve the realism of the model. 
With the washes completed, we next want to add some of the metallic paint, oily steel, to the storage items that we base coated with German Grey earlier. Using this paint, we want to carefully apply it along only the edges. A thin brush will help with this. This edge highlighting technique will complete that dark metallic appearance. Once those smaller details have been picked out, we can next apply our dry brush of oily steel over the tank tracks. If you spill it over onto the rubber areas, don't worry, as these can be cleaned up with some more German Grey. Once you finish a step, remember to clean out your brushes and paint water thoroughly to avoid any cross-contamination of metal paint flecks. The final step is to add some light dust marks to the tank, but this step should probably be performed once you've attached your tracks to the tank. You can use this paint as a dry brush, much like we did with our Russian uniform earlier on, and apply this over the lower parts of the tank surface, the top of the hull, tracks and road wheels, which will result in the appearance of dried mud and dust that has been kicked up during transit. And here we have the completed Cromwell. Now whilst I focus on a Cromwell here, you could easily apply the same colours and techniques to other British vehicles in the late war European theatre as well. For this tutorial, I took a lot of inspiration from the Colours of War book uh, released to accompany Flames of War. It provides an in-depth painting guide that covers an extensive range of World War II and Cold War era infantry and vehicles from multiple nations, eras and theatres. It's definitely worth checking out and is a great reference point for modern history wargamers. You can find a full list of all the paints that I've used in this tutorial in the description below along with any other equipment that I've used to create this video. If you enjoyed this video, do let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my latest videos. And so the only thing left to say is, thanks for watching and goodbye.